I've been playing Genshin for a long time now, and I have every single free-to-play weapon unlocked. But there's something I noticed about these weapons, so in this video, I want to address a couple of things that have been bothering me for a while now. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Amazon Coins and Square Enix. Now, I told you before that Echoes of Mana will come out soon, and, well, it has finally launched, and I'm already playing it myself. The action RPG is fun, there's a lot of recognizable characters I can collect, and I love the old-school music and memories that this game brings me back. Now, here's the deal. If you like buying stuff in gacha games, and you own either an Android or Amazon device, you can save up a lot on in-app purchases by using Amazon Coins. All you have to do is download the Amazon App Store, open it up and get Echoes of Mana from there, then just create an account and top up with Amazon Coins, which you can then use either on Echoes of Mana or any other game that can be found inside the Amazon App Store. And currently, there's a special offer available in the game, where if you spend at least 10,000 Amazon Coins, you'll get a thousand back, which is a pretty insane saving, instead of using the regular in-app purchases. So if you're thinking of buying stuff for your favorite games, at least use Amazon Coins for some great savings. You can learn more about this and follow the steps by using my link in the description, and by doing so, you'll help support my channel big time. So make sure to download Download Echoes of Mana from Amazon App Store. So here's the thing, I've been playing Genshin since day one, and if you've seen my other video about how much I've spent on it, well, you should know that by now, I have obtained quite a lot of weapons. Now, I wouldn't call myself a Mega Whale, because believe it or not, I still use pure free-to-play weapons on more than 20% characters I own in the entire roster. And I'm not doing this because I want to be relatable since I spent money on the game, I do it because these weapons are actually awesome. But I have a problem with free-to-play weapons. While some of them are really, and I mean really good, a lot of them I would actually consider to be just a waste of resources if you do decide to level them up. I mean, at the end of the day, the longer you play this game, the more wishes are spent on the gacha, and by following this kind of logic, it also means you're very likely to obtain more 4-star gacha weapons, maybe even 5-stars from the standard banner. However, even as someone who has tons of different 5-star weapons, I can still tell you there's some free-to-play options I go for just because they're so good, and yet there's not many of them, which is a big problem for me, since as a free-to-play, naturally you'd assume that free-to-play helps players with, well, free-to-play progress. Just look at Prototype Amber as an example, a catalyst that's made fun of by the community, but ironically enough, I actually use it on three characters when I'm building my teams. Mona, in an offensive team with no healing, provides healing while by herself benefits from the energy gain. Sucrose, who is the OG of Taser comms, also works really well with it, especially when you don't have Kokumi or Shinkcho, so that extra healing is a blessing when going through Abyss Chambers. And then there's C4 Yenfei or Tankfei. This is one of the best catalysts you can give for her, and keeps someone like Hu Tao alive if you're running into trouble. But what about refinements? Well, since Genshin's content, for the lack of a better word, is dry, especially considering the fact the 2.7 update has been delayed, I thought why not just get this over with and see how much of a big difference Prototype Amber will have in my teams going from R1 to R5. And as you can see, the difference is noticeable, especially if you repeat the pass of at least a few more times and it all adds up. But is it worth it? Well, if you bother to level up the weapon, maybe? But it's more like an extremely niche option option for endgame players. Point is, I look at some of these free-to-play weapons and I feel like there's an inflation of usage, because there's really only few of them that help me with my teams, while the rest are just… replaceable with better options. Remember when I said 20% of my entire character roster uses free-to-play weapons? Well, what if I told you almost more than half of them are dominated by only two weapons, Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers and Favonius Warbow. The rest are small exceptions for each character, and I would say, if I didn't have an obligation as a content creator to max out these free-to-play weapons and showcase, I would instead just use other 4-star or 5-star options. Don't get me wrong, most of these free-to-play weapons get the job done and are pretty strong, but there's a small problem. Well, maybe also an interesting topic that I haven't really seen discussed a lot and I want to talk about it in this next part. Alright, so let me elaborate here. The definition of free-to-play varies by people because you constantly wish in this game. So you build up your collection of weapons, and who's to say that besides 5-star weapons, any other 4-star from the banners could be considered as free-to-play. I mean, there are some exceptions of strong options without relying too much on randomness. One would be the catch. Now, before making this video, I asked my community to let me know how many of you have it at max refinement, and to my own surprise, almost 40% haven't bothered maxing it out, and more than 20% 
don't even have the weapon. This is hands down one of the best free to play pawl arms you can give to Shangling, Raiden, Toma, Rosaria, or basically any pawl arm user that has high energy cost and good burst damage. And yet, almost half of the players who voted just didn't bother maxing it out, which kind of proves the point. The developers are careful with handing out strong equipment and instead put it behind a fishing activity, which honestly is extremely boring for a lot of people, and I don't blame them for not bothering with getting the weapon to its full potential. But then we have a different situation, Cinnabar Spindle, that's only really good on Albedo, and it's also an event-only weapon, so if you missed the boat, Harbinger of Dawn would like to introduce itself. But here's the thing, some of these really strong options either take a very long time to obtain, and for many, it's a boring activity, while some weapons are time-limited, and won't be available unless Hoyoverse does something similar with their other title, Honkai Impact 3rd, where you can obtain time-limited weapons later in the game's cycle. Honestly, I don't think it's a huge deal, it's just something that I've noticed when playing this game for so long, and really, the whole free-to-play friendliness topic can get unclear, especially when you start considering some of the 4-star gacha weapons. I mean, at some point, you are going to wish on the weapon banner, and you're at least gonna make a hundred wishes on the standard banner from all the free summons we're getting after raising a character or special events, and you're bound to run into these 4-star weapons on the featured banners as well. Which is why I want to talk about the Favonius and Sacrificial Weapon series. Truth be told, I consider these weapons to be the ultimate free-to-play solutions if you're doing the Abyss. The amount of units that can utilize these weapons is insane, and with the whole trend of Inazuma characters having huge energy costs, I think it's safe to say players are starting to notice that more and more focus is put on energy recharge. Just to give some context, most of my supports have Favonius or Sacrificial on them. Heck, I even run double Favonius with Shangling and Bennett in the international team comp because of how tight the energy requirements are in order to make this team work, while some like Diona, Xingqiu, Chongyun, Kazuha can benefit themselves and the team by a lot after they generate their particles two times in a row when using sacrificials. I mean, sure, Favonius Greatsword and Codex rarely get talked about, but these two weapon series are absolutely broken when you want to make teams that actually work and help you with rotations. You can, of course, min-max energy recharge, substats, or get different weapons, but these ones are just so good, it's not even funny, and you can get them from weapons or standard banner, even from featured banner as well, so there's plenty of opportunities to obtain them. And this is one of the major reasons why I wanted to make this video. Along with Thrilling Tales, these two weapon series, well, maybe more for Favonius than Sacrificial, literally define of what I believe to be free-to-play weapon choices. Yes, there are craftables, which I'll talk about in a minute, but when you look at the majority of strategy guys you see popping up all the time, these two weapon series are a big deal. I mean, I can still cannot take off Sacrificial Sword from Xingqiu for about a year now, I just don't want to mess around with his energy recharge, and it works exceptionally well on him. Now, I left this as a final part because it's a common criticism you'll hear from content creators of the community. We all know the drop rates for prototype materials are absolutely unfair. It's the only thing that keeps me going back to old weekly bosses, because I no longer need anything else from them besides those prototypes. But even then, how many craftables do you actually want to build and invest into when you are ready for it? I mean, besides Prototype Amber I briefly mentioned, there's really not that many options out of what, 18? The big ones that come to mind are White Blind, Crescent Pike, Iron Sting, Prototype Crescent as well as Star Glitter and Amber, Amanoma Kageuchi, and maybe Hamayumi with Katane Crossbear too. That's 9 weapons out of 18 and almost all of them are really niche options. Besides Prototype Crescent and Star Glitter along with Amanoma, Manoma Kageuchi. Remember, you are putting in Mora, Horus, and most importantly, your own time that you will need to spend farming for these mats that yield not the most exceptional results. Still, on the bright side, almost half of the craftable weapons are great. It comes without a surprise, but I really wish Hoyovers increased the drop rate for prototypes so people could build and experiment with more of these fully refined weapons. I know I haven't mentioned stuff like Black Tassel, which is a great option for Zhongli or Toma, as well as Blacklift weapon series, but a lot of people love playing this game for the chance to summon something cool, and giving up your wishes for Blacklift, especially considering the fact only few characters like Diluc, Kaya, and maybe Xiao benefit the best from them, it's not always ideal for everyone. Anyway, to wrap it all up, I wanted to make this video in order to look at some of the things that rarely get talked about, like underrated weapons such as Prototype Amber, the way we define free-to-play as we keep growing in the game for a long time, and of course, the good old complaining about prototype drop rates. I honestly believe that not many players are aware just how important energy recharge is, because for what it's worth, it's a boring stat to focus on, especially if you don't care about the Abyss, which then means you have unlimited time to just gather up the particles and do the bursts. However, in time-limited content, ER is becoming 
becoming more and more relevant, especially thanks to Inazuma character burst costs. The Hoyoverse is clearly trying to tie in as a synergy for Raiden Shogun's burst, but otherwise, I just think there's a good amount of free to play options that I keep using till this day, even after spending so much on the game. Sometimes out of convenience, other times purely because it's the best thing the character can have in my team comp. Hopefully, you liked this small rant video I made, and if you enjoyed watching it, I'd really appreciate if you could support my channel and subscribe to it, as well as leave a comment or press a like button. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.